Your doctor has recommended that you undergo surgery to treat reflux disease. But what does that actually mean? Your diaphragm is a muscle that separates your chest from your abdomen and helps you to breathe. Normally, the diaphragm has an opening for the esophagus to pass through where it connects with the stomach. At this point, the ring-like layer of muscle, which acts as a one-way valve, sometimes becomes lax. When you have reflux disease, the weakened muscle allows the contents of your stomach to back up into your esophagus. This can cause considerable discomfort, often worse at night. With symptoms like heartburn, difficulty swallowing, chest pain, and belching. Reflux disease is often caused by a hiatal hernia, pregnancy, an ulcer or tumor of the esophagus. About half of the patients with severe reflux disease often have a hiatal hernia, which is a tear in the diaphragm. As an alternative to surgery, you can avoid foods and beverages that are high in acid, eat small, frequent meals four or five times a day, and avoid eating close to bedtime. You can also use liquid antacids for minor discomfort. However, when it comes to treating reflux disease, surgery is often recommended after other therapies have failed. Surgical procedures performed by making an incision large enough to expose the entire operative area are called open procedures. Your doctor believes that your medical condition and overall state of health make you a good candidate for a less intrusive laparoscopic surgery. A laparoscope is a narrow tube that contains a light source and a small video camera. Using a laparoscope, the surgeon is able to operate by making one or more very small incisions through which the sterile laparoscope and possibly other instruments are inserted into the body. Using the laparoscope's video camera, the surgeon is able to explore and inspect the interior of the abdomen, often allowing the surgeon to see with greater detail and with more clarity than with the human eye alone. However, it is important to understand that during the procedure, your surgical team is always prepared to convert a laparoscopic procedure to an open procedure, should they feel that your condition requires a more direct approach. If the surgical team makes this decision, you will find upon waking up that your doctor has made a larger incision and that healing may proceed more slowly. Converting to an open procedure will affect the length of your recovery and will probably require hospitalization. Of course, no surgery is completely risk-free, but your physician believes that if you decide not to undergo the recommended procedure, you may be putting your health at risk. On the day of your operation, you will be asked to put on a surgical gown. You may receive a sedative by mouth and an intravenous line may be put in. You will then be transferred to the operating table. In the operating room, the anesthesiologist will begin to administer anesthesia, most probably general anesthesia. The surgeon will then apply antiseptic solution to the skin around the area where the incisions will be made. Place a sterile drape around the operative site. After allowing a few minutes for the anesthetic to take effect, a small incision is made above the umbilicus. Then a hollow needle will be inserted through the abdominal wall. And the abdomen will be inflated with carbon dioxide. An umbilical port is created for the laparoscope. Four more incisions will be made with care taken to keep the openings as small as possible. Once in place, the laparoscope will provide video images so the surgeon can insert the instruments used to locate and pull back the liver in order to see the upper part of the stomach. Then the surgeon cuts away the tissue that connects the liver and the stomach. 
Then the surgeon divides and separates the arteries that supply blood to the top of the stomach. After freeing the stomach from the spleen, your doctor wraps the upper portion of the stomach around the esophagus and sutures it into place. A rubber tube is placed in the esophagus to keep the wrap from becoming too tight. All of the instruments are withdrawn. The carbon dioxide is allowed to escape. The muscle layers and other tissues are sewn together and the skin is closed with sutures or staples. Finally, sterile dressings are applied. Most patients experience at least some pain following surgery, but if properly handled, it shouldn't present any serious problems. Pain used to be regarded as an unavoidable side effect of surgery, but today, pain can be managed with great effectiveness. And as the patient, you have an important role to play. Before surgery, be sure to ask the medical staff about the type and duration of pain normally associated with your surgery. Find out in advance about your pain management options. Work with the staff to develop a pain management plan. Discuss your options. There are alternatives to drugs that can lessen your need for pain medication. Ask your doctor for help in finding a pain management class. Many of these workshops teach helpful relaxation techniques, positive thinking, and nerve stimulation exercises. Following surgery, make sure to let your nurse know right away how you're feeling and whether or not you are in any pain. Be specific and help them to measure your discomfort. If you're having trouble expressing yourself, Try to rank what you're feeling on a scale from 1 to 10. Never be shy about asking for help. If you experience pain that just won't go away, report it to the nurse. Pain is an important indicator that helps you and your medical staff understand your body's healing process. Reflux disease only rarely leads to complications. The first is a persistent residual neuralgia, or pain, around the scar. It can be either localized or general. It may develop soon after surgery, or even weeks or months later. Usually it will decrease in intensity with time, but in very rare situations, it can become permanent. More frequently, patients report achiness in the shoulders and chest. This is caused by the body's reaction to the carbon dioxide used to inflate the abdomen and it will clear up in a matter of a few days. The most serious problem would likely be a puncture in the bowel or liver, but these are very rare occurrences. Finally, as mentioned earlier, the surgical team may decide to end the laparoscopic procedure and convert to an open surgery.